What's going on guys, Mr. Bigsy here. Uh, today's video, I'm gonna show you uh, what I've been working on lately, for a long time actually. Um, a little something different. This is my 1988 MK3 Supra. Bought it a little bit over a year ago, about a year and a half ago. And uh, it was non-turbo, but I did swap everything to make it a turbo, like the molding, and all that stuff. Um, you can also see that I went with the uh, 89 plus tail lights and uh, turbo wing. Uh, I also fully built the engine. It's a GTE now. I'll just pop it for you here. Actually, better get a clamp here. The hood struts are bad like most MK3s. I think there's still the stock ones. So I'll just clamp that there. Keep it open. So yes, it's uh, fully built. Uh, CP pistons, eagle rods, cleavelet bearings, Brian Crower valves and valve springs. Um, stock cams, but they are the uh, there is a non-turbo cam. Uh, I can't remember if it's the intake or exhaust side, but uh, it's bigger than the turboed one. So I have one of the turbo ones and one of the uh, non-turbos. So I have the biggest cam set up for stock. And then a uh, 76 mil turbo, AR91. Uh, custom uh, intake there with the uh, map integrated into it. Uh, this is my little uh, reservoir, uh, coolant reservoir. It just looked a lot better than the stock one, like this one right here. Uh, stock rad. I'm going to be upgrading that pretty soon, maybe a Mishi motor or something like that. And uh, uh, it's basically. Oh, here, here's my wastegate. That's a 50 mil, I'm pretty sure, and that is the screamer pipe, which comes down and around through the wheel well there. And comes out here. That'll be shooting some flames. That's pretty. That's a pretty cool spot. Uh, front front mount is pretty invisible, so it's kind of a sleeper, you could say. Uh, right now, I am waiting. It is a non-turbo uh, cluster, and the uh, engine harness I use, engine harness I use, uh, is. Uh, for a GTE, but uh, it's been snipped a couple places, so none of the gauges work right now. I do have to make a modification to the tack behind the tack. There is four resistors. I gotta look up how to fix that so it works with a GTE. Um, I got the uh, three pod pillar gauge. I got boost, wide band, and oil temp. And uh, this was uh, refurbished with the carbon fiber background chrome rings and new LED lights and faces so this one I swapped it to 300 kilometers an hour and 10,000 rpm usually it goes to 7,000 rpm on the stock one and I want to say 220 maybe on the 240 I think actually I think it's 240 it goes stock but I had uh, customized to 300 and the seat belt and brake light are usually here and here right here and here I had I had those moved to over here the, those two lights and yeah and then a double din deck a nice picture of a Supra there Paul Walker Supra uh, the dash is apart right now because I'm just working on the wiring but uh, oh and I also am using an AMV1 to tune it. It does not have a tune yet. It has a base tune. It does run, but it, it, it you can't really drive it. As soon as you start uh, to hit boost, it just cuts out, hits fuel cut, and just dies down. Um, but it is movable, uh, like around the block, basically. And a, uh, uh, there's my catch can. It's a nice shiny catch can. How does this go to the Top of the valve covers there. Uh, they were 
they used to be red valve covers, but once I started putting, the, putting it together, uh, the ventilation holes are in different spots on the uh, GE. They're right here, under here, and that won't work. So I had to swap it to the GTE ones, which are just the regular stock silver color, I guess. Maybe I'll paint those red again someday. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, and uh, had to get the uh, ha had to chop the turbo uh, inlet housing, and then put a 90 on there. Boot piping goes down right in front of the crank. It is very solid there, so it doesn't hit the crank because that was going to be a problem. See, you can't move it at all. Goes down and around, keeps coming, and then under here comes around goes around and then into the intercooler right there and then on the other side sorry I'm a bit sick uh, it comes out of the intercooler around and then around in here inside the fender here and goes through the fender in the stock position and it comes around there's the blow-off valve that's a 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter teal blow-off valve comes around and goes around to the throttle body. Some people have said, you know, your intake uh, temperatures are gonna get real hot with the turbo there. But uh, I've tested this blanket and these are very substantial blankets, like barely any heat comes off of the blanket. So I think it should be fine. I have a few other friends that have used the same setup and they said they haven't had any problems. And uh, yeah, eventually I'm gonna be switching over to an FFIM. Uh, I just went with the stock one for now. Uh, 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 no reason. I don't know. Just haven't gotten around to switching it yet. Um, it is still the W58 transmission. Uh, I have an R154 though. It just needs new seals. Just maintenance basically. Get it back to new. And the reason why I didn't do all that before I built this or like um, finished it is because you know you got to get the new drive shaft probably a new diff basically I better get a new diff and uh, yeah because the drive shafts are different sizes so I'm probably gonna do that maybe maybe this year I don't know uh, no probably next year it's almost December um, but that's pretty much it uh, right now what I am doing is I'm just doing the little wires like I just hooked up the temperature one now the temperature one works but that's the only gauge that works right now other than actually volt works but that's pretty much useless I need to get the fuel sensor or fuel uh, sending unit to work um, and like I said the uh, temperature one is fixed now uh, the tack I need to fix I don't know I have to go on the internet and figure out how to do that and the speedo is just unplugged um, Oh, and oil pressure. Oil pressure, I gotta set that up too. It's just a little little sensor there. I gotta solder in or something. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for now. I thought I'd show you guys this because, you know, I haven't been uh, playing any Forza lately, so this is what I've been doing. It's a pretty, pretty crazy setup. Uh, so, yeah, once I get this done, I wanna, I'm gonna take it to the dyno. Maybe uh, put down 300 first time just because the stock transmission just get a, like a just have a little break in period and then maybe uh, maybe the start of spring take it back there get to 500 wheel and then uh, change the injectors off maybe halfway through the summer I don't know maybe maybe a couple of years depends how, how I like uh, 500 horsepower to the wheels um, but uh, there's only 550 cc injectors RC injectors in there and those are only good up to about 500 wheels, so we'll see how that goes. And then uh, once I want more horsepower, probably around 700 wheel, I'll uh, go to 1,000 cc injectors, maybe a little more. Not too sure yet. But that's pretty much all I can think of. Uh, oh, I'll show you this little cool feature. I am the only one in Canada that I know of. I talked to the uh, maker of these. Uh, he said I was the only person in Canada to receive these. These are door sills. 
custom made. I cannot remember the guy's name, but these are really beautiful. They're on both sides. They they just screw right on top of the over or right over the uh, stock one, uh, like this gray one here. But they add a nice touch to that. And I got some niche wheels. Those look pretty nice. Uh, the back is how I like it. You know, it's, I don't know, I might add a little more spacer to that, but you know, it's pretty fine for now. On the front, I don't have them on. I don't know, the shop messed up my offset, so I'm having to fix it with spacers. And right here, this is the only real flaw on the uh, body. Uh, uh, I put the spaces on and I asked for a torque, uh, how much torque to put them at. And they said 70 something. So I put them at that and the wheel came off. Went three blocks and this came down and then this caught on the cement and pulled it back a little bit here. The rotor is still fine. It didn't really scrape that much. I wasn't going fast at all because I knew something was wrong. I thought it was ball joints maybe or something like that. But then all of a sudden the wheel came off, so it's, that was pretty crazy. But yeah, it's still a work in progress. I'll keep you guys updated. I'll for sure put the dyno on, on YouTube, if I can get that. But overall, just a great project car. It's real easy to work on. Um, I really recommend. It is a little bit messy, but that'll be fixed over the years. I'm just trying to get it running. Paint the odd piece, like the igniter here. Um, you can see the zip ties here. One winter, I was I was really cold and it stopped working. The little the little valve in here, so I had to zip tie it up so I could get hot air. But I won't need hot anymore because hot air anymore because this won't be a winter driver. I deleted all the winter driving things like uh, block heater and all that stuff. I um, forget what this piece is called here. It's a very odd name, but it goes in this right in this slot. This is my map sensor here. It is not hooked up yet. I'm not too sure where, the, where to wire that in. Maybe into the ECU or something. I will be hooking up my BR rev limiter here at some point. That's a really cool piece. And uh, yeah, these are just all the tuning instructions that AEM provides. But other than that, that's all I can think of. That looks really nice. I will. Oh, might as well show you these two. I got 6K HIDs hooked up in here. Got them from Drift Motion. They come as a kit. You can just get the uh, 6K headlights. They come as full ballasts. Like the whole the whole glass part comes as one. And uh, 3K of fog lights. My fog lights, uh, I don't know, they're not wired up properly or something, but they have never worked the whole time owning this car. So, But I do have the 3K HIDs in there, so they will be yellow. Um, I'll probably just eventually get a full full restore on the body. Like get all these, you know. There's it's a little bit. It's pretty dirty right now, but you know there's a couple scratches every every couple places and hail dents and you know like uh, right here is from putting the engine in stuff like that. This was cracked from a rock a long long time ago. I didn't even own the car back then. And uh, yeah, so just full body work and finally just get the whole build finished basically. Get it perfect, get it fast, that type of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this little video here of what I've been doing. I'll keep you guys updated. See ya! Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment.